One of the ways to avoid talking about racism is to blame the victim. Blaming the victim is defined as occurring when the, quote, victim of a crime or any wrongful act is held entirely or partially at fault for the harm that befalls them. It's the, you must have brought it on yourself idea, wearing the wrong clothes, being in the wrong place, you get the idea. It's a way to avoid uncomfortable conversations and a reality and experience that isn't yours. We shut down empathy and logic by simply throwing out a quick phrase that can even make the victim a willing participant or instigator of the crime or wrong exacted upon them. This happens all too often when it comes to racism, and in this episode, we're going to explore just that. This is Loki Mulholland, and it's time to get uncomfortable. We're joined by freedom writer and civil rights activist, LeVon Brown. Hello, LeVon. How you doing? Hello, Loki. How are you? Uh, doing good. So uh, well, let's, let's, let's talk about this blaming the victim thing when it comes to racism. Why, why do you think we do it? We meaning white people, of course. Well, I, I think it's just because the person is saying, I can't be responsible for this, so it must be them um, that's doing this to themselves. They, they uh, don't act the way we tell them to act. They don't speak the way we tell them to speak. If they did, we wouldn't have this problem. If, if they didn't complain as much, if they did, so it's always somebody else because otherwise you have to say, I'm responsible for this or I'm partially responsible for this, so I'm responsible for fixing it. So it's easier to blame somebody else. It, it's just easier to, to not deal with the problem than to say, you know, I may, I may have some responsibility in this, so let's talk about it. I think that's why. Yeah, so it's it's done to justify one's own racism. It is. It, it's, it's, that's what it is. By, by not confronting it. I mean, it's, you know, for example, here we hear people say, if they didn't break the law, then there's no reason to run. Exactly. Or back during the days when they would lynch black people at, at the drop of a dime, it would be for a myriad of reasons, right? Uh, that they could blame the victim. Well, it was pretty much, if you could talk to the person wrong, you could look at the person wrong, you could uh, not move when you're supposed to move, or we just made it up. I mean, in the case of Wilmington, we just made it up. We say, you're going to ride it, so we're going to ride it first. Right. So it's any number of reasons that they blame the other person. And then, you know, and then there's cognitation of, I mean, when you bring up Wilmington, I mean, it's this cognitation of race riots. And of course, when white people hear race riots, they don't hear themselves. Right, they don't. But the race riots were really, it's white people attacking black people. The biggest riots in this country were those. Right. But who is the victim? Because it's the white people who are, you know, they had to do it. Right. Well, because we didn't pay attention. Right. You see, if we had paid attention to what they wanted to do, for instance, in, in, in Wilmington, they didn't want people, black people holding office. They didn't want them running for office. They didn't want them to have jobs. And here they are doing all of those things that we told them not to do. So we must write. Because if we don't write, they will. So, you know, I, it's just a matter of not of people not wanting to be blamed, not wanting to take the blame for what they've created. Because they wouldn't, you know what what it is is because they wouldn't create anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it must it must be the black man that's doing that, because we wouldn't do that, right? And we're doing it for their own good. So that's what all this is about. Now it's it's a lot of people just don't want to be blamed for anything. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so so I mean you know one of the things we sometimes hear is that uh, you know, black people are just being too sensitive. Yes. You, you just see racism in everything. Yeah. Well, in some cases, uh, we are because we don't push people to do something different. In other words, mm. uh, we don't go places where white people go. Uh, we, don't, we don't give them a chance to uh, express their racism properly. Uh, we don't get, you know, it's... it's, it's uh, they say they don't mean anything by it, and we take it personally. And and they, you can do that, you can think that way as long as you don't feel that you're responsible or your people are responsible for what happened in the past. So I, I think it's 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 that it's that 
if I don't attack first, they're going to blame me. Yeah, but coming back to this idea of, you know, black people are are, are just seeing, you know, they just, they just find a reason to, to call something racist. So again, they're blaming the black person for how they feel. Now, in some cases, let's let's be honest now, black people commit crimes. Black people attack people because they're white. All that stuff happens. It's not that it doesn't happen. It's just that it never gets talked about. So if I go up to a white person and I start talking, he says, I don't know, he says whatever. And I say, well, you know, that's racist. Right. There's a way to say that to him that hopefully he understands that that's hurtful. I don't want him doing that. As opposed to, I'm going to punch him in the mouth the next time you say that. And I think we go too far too soon to, I'm going to punch you in the mouth. And I think that's because we're learning now about what goes on in this country as a whole. We're learning about prisons. We're learning about the history of of this country. We're learning about what happens to Black people. So I think that sometimes a, a white person really doesn't mean anything. That's just what he's been taught. There's no any black people. Yeah. And so you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, obviously in this day and age, we would assume people would know this. But at the same time, you, you know, there's plenty of white people who are just trying to tiptoe that line and who are speaking in code. Right. Of course there are. So that you can always, you know, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, Reagan's a great example of the uh, state rights at the, was it the Neshoba, Neshoba County Fair? Yes, 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 yes. And, you know, which is where the three civil rights activists were killed in 1964, you know, Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner. Yes, yes. And so he comes to, he comes to Mississippi. This is where he kicks off his campaign for election. And he, you know, talks about state rights. Right. And now... If anyone says, well, that's racist, well, what do you mean? Well, how's that racist? We're just talking about the states having the rights, state rights, right? Right. But those who know what he is talking about really knows what he's talking about. But it's a, it's, this, it's this balance of language, like saying, well, what, what do you mean Chinese virus? I mean, it was a virus that started in China. I mean, why is that racist? Right, exactly. Yeah, we, we know what you're getting at. That's what people do. So. I mean, at its core, this victim blaming is really about making one out to be the real victim, though. So, so for example, if I if I accuse you of being too sensitive, so I say something and you're like, "Hey, whoa, wait a second, that's racist." It really means I'm the one being attacked. Right. So I, as a white person, say something racist. You call me on it, and then I say, "Well, that's not what I meant." Right. You're reading too much into it. Right. So, so instantly, I'm flipping the script. You are projecting on me. I'm the victim, right. the white person, who is, I'm the victim because now you are attacking me for something. I didn't, I didn't even mean it that way. Now, that could be very honest and sincere. Maybe I just didn't know. Or, you know what, I'm just a racist and I know exactly what I'm saying. Right. Well, Because I have some hidden agenda. It's what they do next that tells you. So if the person, if, if the person accuses me of being too sensitive, as opposed to saying, I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are two different responses to the same thing. So you can tell you can tell immediately if the person is sincere about what they're doing. Right, but whose job is that to, I mean, again, is, is, is the onus on the black person to not over-respond? No. Or is it on the white person to go, hey, wait a second. Obviously, I accepted this person. And I'm either going to take this one or two ways. I'm either going to defend myself, you know, like we talk about in the film, right. The Uncomfortable Truth, put up those walls. Or is this an opportunity for me to reflect and go, okay, why was that insensitive? Why was that racist? And how can I learn from this? Right. The next sentence is on the white person, not the black person. But unfortunately, all too often, the black person has to uh, acquiesce. And I don't, I'm not sure they should keep doing that because a lot of white people are saying, well, I had nothing to do with it. Well, of course you did. You know, of course you did. You're the reason I feel this way. Because you as an individual, okay, I might not be part of the entire system and so forth that created this foundation. Right. But the moment that I 
reflect that in the language that I am using to say something that can be construed as racist, then yeah, I am a part of that. Exactly. I might not be all of it, but now I, I am playing. I am instantly playing a role in this. You're playing a role, even if you ref- especially if you refuse to understand. Right. That if, that if I'm telling you this, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm telling you that you need to consider my feelings when you say this. So it's it's the, I punched you. Why are you upset? You know, you don't tell me it hurt. I know if it hurts or not. Exactly. And so the louder you scream, ow, the more offended I get. Right. Unfortunately, that happens all the time. No, all too often. Sure. That the that the person doesn't say, you know, I won't do that or, or, or I didn't mean that or explain to me why that's so bad. Now, if that's, if, they, if they're looking for an argument, just walk away. Sure. But there they are people who are out there who are saying stuff that they don't understand or they don't believe. I'll give you a perfect example. So a, a young man, I think he's about 12 now or 13. And he's over in England. Mm-hmm. So they asked him, he has to write a paper about slavery. So he writes in the paper, uh, if the slaves paid attention and did what they were told, nothing would happen to them. Hmm. Now, I, now his mother, thank God, was reading the paper. But I told her that's exactly what he's been taught mm-hmm. in England, that uh, if the slaves did what they were supposed to do uh, and, and picked the cotton or whatever the hell they were supposed to do, then they were treated fine. In my other life, I'm a filmmaker, and one of my more fascinating films I created is the award-winning film titled Black, White, and Us. It's about viewing racism through the lens of transracial adoptions in Utah. Utah? Yeah, Utah. It just so happens to be the transracial adoption capital of the world. So what happens when white families who didn't believe racism existed anymore adopt a black child? Find it on Amazon Prime or visit LokiMalholland.com to purchase a copy for your collection. You know, I think it's important that you say that, that he was taught that because no one comes up with that idea on their own. No. You're not born with that idea. No, you're not. You're not. E- either way, I mean, I'm not, you know, I-, I wasn't raised to think about civil rights. Right. Right. And no one's raised to think about racism. Right. Exactly. They're not. This is obviously coming from somewhere. So. So what I'm saying is, so his mother got very angry at him for saying that. Right. And I said, wait a minute. Somebody told them that. Now, I could have gotten just as angry as she did. Now the boy is just stuck somewhere. I said, let's. So I said to him, let's have a talk about it. Where did you get that? Who taught you that? What book did you get that from, if you did? Mm-hmm. So, uh, and you live in a country that had India and, and Africa and all kinds of places that it did shit to. Yeah. And it made a lot of money off of slavery in this country. So it behooves you to understand what slavery is. Right. I could have done what his mother did was said, that is a stupid statement. Uh you know, you, you you can't say that because that's not true. He doesn't know any better. So what I'm saying is that many a white person in this country, because of their privilege, are not taught that that's hurtful. Yeah. The second you tell someone they can't say something or do something, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to do it. Right. <laughs> so what you need to do is you say, that hurt. Uh, don't. I'm not going to avoid you. I'm going to talk to you. Now you may decide that you're going to fight me on it. In which case, I don't. You know me. I don't. I'm done. Yeah. But if you decide to have a conversation that, based on facts, that you that you feel that you taught that, then we let's talk. Now, why do you say that if it hurts me? You said more than that. You said you have no respect for me. Right. And of course, the person might say, "Well, that's not you know that's gosh, that's not what I mean at all." Okay, well, well, good. Well, so well, let's talk good. about that. Right, exactly. Yeah, right. It's because they don't understand the impact of what they're saying. So, the title of this is is "Who's the Real Victim of Racism?" That's a little facetious, of course, but 
to think about that for a moment is yes, obviously, clearly black people are victims of racism, but you have some of these white people who are growing up who could be victims of racism in the sense that because they're not taught anything else, they are victims of, of, a, of a society that's racist. Yes, they are. But they're victims not of me, but of the system. We both, remember, we all come from the same place. Mm -hmm. So the white kid is taught what he's taught, I'm taught what I'm taught. Now, it behooves us to talk to each other to figure this out. But he has a, he has a role in fixing the problem because I can't fix it. No, just to be clear, of course, now that doesn't mean that he's subjected to racism, but he is a victim in some capacity from the system in and of itself. Well, he is, right. That limits his ability to you know, engage and, and interact with, uh, with a whole body of people. Well, sure it does. It, it, it not, not only that, it, 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 it keeps him from listening. Right. Because he's been told all his life that he's special, he's different. He hasn't been told that, he's just been treated that way. And the only opinion that matters is his. Of course it is. Well, we see this. We see this in gender as well. I mean, you know, guys, you know, they don't have to listen to women. I mean, come on. Exactly. That's it's, it's it's the same thing. Yeah. My wife said to me the other days. I said something. To me, it was funny, but I said she just said, "Don't say that because that you know that bothers me." Mm. And so I said, "Oh, I'm sorry. I won't say that ever again." And I didn't get angry about it. I just I didn't realize that. But, you know, I, I say to her all the time, I'm dumb. You have to tell me. Right. I, I don't know. So you have to tell me. So as soon as she said that, I could see where that could be harmful. Yeah. But I had to be taught that because I didn't come up with that. You know, the average white person does not grow up with that. He grows up with, I'm white. And the world, I, I can do what I want in the world. And black people don't matter. Right. It doesn't have to be spoken. I mean, some people, that's actually literally what they're taught. But for the most part, it's just assumed through the observations of society. Right. Yeah. That white person who feels that he is a victim, again, he is a victim of the society that we grow up in. He's not a victim of the black people. He's a victim of the society that he grows up in. Right. So the kid that asked me, well, how would I, as a black person, feel like, standing up in front of them and talking about racism, how does that make me feel? Well, he's asking a legitimate question. Right. Because he hasn't heard, he doesn't have any black people to come in his house. <laughs> My work has taken me to a lot of places and I've been fortunate to meet some incredible people. But when I came to Selma and met Joanne Blackman Bland, I knew I was in the presence of greatness. Joanne was 11 years old when she was attacked on the Edmund Pettus Bridge on Bloody Sunday in 1965. She wasn't old enough to vote, but understood its importance enough to be there. After Selma is an in-depth look at how our right to vote has eroded since the signing of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, the fight for the right to vote continues. Get informed. You can find After Selma on Amazon Prime or visit LokiMulholland.com to purchase a copy for your collection. So, so, so there's a, there's there's a, there's two levels to this victimization. One's the superficial level where they're not really victim as, at, at all because they're just projecting that. Well, I'm the victim because you're calling me racist. Well, no, you're not a victim in that regards. No, but you are a victim of your own ignorance, having been raised in a racist society that tells you that you are superior, and everything that comes along with that. Um, so you know, so how how does a uh, you know the race card? Do you have a race card? I mean, where is this and what is it and uh, how do you play it? What's the game? <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, it, it's not about race and we make it about race. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I told you the story of when Belinda was called the N-word. Right. And she was, I don't know, she was five years old, six years old, whatever she was. Yeah, your, your daughter, Belinda. My daughter, Belinda. And we were out in New Mexico which is very few black people go to New Mexico. But we were out in New Mexico, and this little boy called her, you know, said nigga, something. Mm -hmm. And my wife got very upset about it when we heard about it. And, and your wife I, is white, just so my clarification. Wife, right. My wife is Italian. And I said to 
to uh, to my wife, let's hold up and see what the parents say. Because the little boy didn't know what it was saying. No, no, hold on, hold on a second. I said your wife is white, and you said she's Italian. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> I would never introduce my wife as German or Irish or whatever the heck she is. I have no idea. I have a thing about Italy, so maybe that's why. But yes. Yeah. I'm just curious. I'm just curious. Yeah, interesting. Uh, it's funny. I never would have thought about that. But maybe, uh, well, she is white. But I was. It's interesting that I would. I would correct that. Uh, you know, it's funny. I I have to think about that because I think of what I just said was she's not American white. <laughs> she's, she's right. A, you know. Right. 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 <laughs> is she from Italy? No. 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 No, her father was Italian. Her oh, mother, sure. Her mother was German. Well, yeah, uh, well, there's, a, there's a combo. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, the, Axis, the Axis powers. Yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, but I mean, it's like, I, I, I'm just thinking about this for a moment, just because it's like how, how we identify each other in that regards, because um, your wife might say you're from Mississippi. Right. But she would never say, well, he's from Africa or he's from, you know, I don't know. Ghana or someplace. She never tried to. She never tried to identify your nationality. She was right. She would say Mississippi. Right. 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 In America, everybody who is black is black. What I mean by that is, I don't care if you come from the islands. If you come from, mm-hmm. I don't care where you come from. You're black. So if you look black, guess what? You're black. So as soon as I, as soon as I walk through the door, everybody knows that I'm black. Right. But you would not know that my wife uh, was Italian. No. Unless you knew Italians, but you would not know that. So I, it's funny that I would do that, but uh, I am easily identifiable. As a matter of fact, I've said that to people, that everybody knows you're black. Right. As soon as you walk through the door, they know. As a matter of fact, they just did a study on electronic devices. They know the way you speak, whether you're black or not. Interesting. Well, you know, and, and then there's yeah, obviously, you know, yes, they identify you as black, and then you open your mouth, and then they're going to try to place you. Oh, yes. he's he's from the islands, or he's from the continent. Right. But at the end of the day, you're still black. It doesn't matter. Yeah. If you if you hear you black. Yeah. So so it was interesting because you know, and, and talking about the race card here for a moment, you know, in in you know, we're going back a little bit here, but O.J. Simpson's trial, um, they were accused the defense of playing the race card when they were talking about Mark Furman um, use of the N-word. Right. You know, alleging that he tampered with evidence and so forth. Right. And uh, so, so I mean, this the, the race card really kind of came out in that regards, if you will. Right. And it became more of the, uh, more, you know, more prominence. Yeah, it became um, a thing. It became, became a, thing. a thing. Right. Is playing the race card a, a white person saying, wait a second, you're just playing race again? You're, you're bringing up race to make an excuse. The black person plays the card. <laughs> the black person is always the one that brings up the race thing. But but yeah, I get that. But for this example, like in the O.J. Simpson trial, people were criticizing the defense for even bringing up the fact that you know, Mark Furman used the N-word. Right. Is is that a defense mechanism amongst whites to accuse, again, creating the victim? Right. I'm the victim because you're just playing the race card again. Everything's about racism. Good grief. Get over it. Right? That sort of attitude. So are are black people accused of deliberately, you know, playing the card? They are. So what happens is is that if they get accused of playing that card, no matter what happens. Even when someone says something racist, all I got to say is you're playing the race card, washes it clean, I'm free, I'm not a racist because you're just bringing it up. Right. White people will will bring it up in a way, for instance, if you talk about the number of black people in prison, they will say it's got nothing to do with the fact that they're black people, that you are just playing the race card. But if you know, you know that that, that's why. Right. They're in jail because they're black. An Ordinary Hero is my first award-winning documentary. It's about the life of my mother, Joan Trumpower Mulholland, and her participation in the civil rights movement. For most of us, our mothers are heroes because they're mothers, and mom is just mom. But when your mother's a civil rights icon, and yet you never really knew it, things change. 
Go check out An Ordinary Hero and find out how choosing to do what was right instead of what was easy helped change the world. You can find it on Amazon Prime or visit LokiMulholland.com to purchase a copy for your collection. Whites and blacks commit crimes at roughly the same rate, but a larger proportion of the black population is incarcerated. Exactly. Because, well, they need to fill the jails and... But that's just black people playing the race card. Uh, look, you just, you're, you're, you're reading too much into this. That's exactly right. And usually it's about race, by the way. So, I mean, in reality, are white people just not sensitive enough to how other people feel? I don't think they are. They're not even sensitive. White people in general are not even sensitive to what they think. Forget about anybody else. But they certainly are not about anybody. They will tell you in a heartbeat it's got nothing to do with race when that's all it's got to do with. Right. White people will tell you that. Yeah, I'm just thinking, so you know, whenever they're confronted, whatever ism it might be, right, that they're pushing back when instead they should be reflecting on how other people feel. They should be. They should be. They should be questioning what they think. Why would you even think that? I mean, if I tell you my feelings are hurt, why should you worry about what color I am? Mm-hmm. Right? That's not, that's not, that's what I'm saying is people spend all the time in the world trying to blame the victim as opposed to looking at themselves and saying, am I a part of this? And a lot of white people do this, but not enough. Am I perpetrating something that started years ago? It's not a question of, did you have slaves? It's, am I perpetrating it by not listening to how this person feels? If I tell somebody, uh, a statue offends me, Mm -hmm. well, it offends me. I'll tell you why if you want to know, but it offends me. Accept that and then say, well, you shouldn't be offended because... But don't tell me I'm not offended. I am. Right. right? Well, you you being offended offends me. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like... That's that's when I stop talking to the person. <laughs> and don't tell me that me being offended by you being offended is is, is not real. Yeah. Because but those, that's, the, that's just the way I feel. Right. Right. Well, I mean, and again, that, that's when you're just justifying yourself. And, and you're really just offending yourself. Again, you're victimizing, you're, you know, you're creating yourself as the victim. Right. Uh, you, and you're, you're really just right. justifying your own racism. That's what you're doing. You see, I think the problem with people don't understand, white people don't understand that racism, in many cases, is just a system. It has nothing to do with them individually. But it ha- it's a system that they, they were brought up under and I was too. Right. So you're not going to feel the same way I'm going to feel. Uh, so allow me to explain to you why I feel the way I feel. And I will allow you to feel to explain how you feel. But we don't get that far. As soon as I open my mouth, at what well, is the race card? Right. No, it isn't. It's You've offended me by saying X. And it is the same as... What's going on now with women and men? Unfortunately, women have to teach men what they're doing. And they're doing it by being angry, by being whatever, but they have to teach. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I, as a man, will make mistakes because I am not a woman. You, as a black person, as a white person, rather, will make mistakes because you're white. You're not black. Mm. You don't know what this feels like to me. Let me tell you. And if you're willing to listen, I'll tell you. Now, you still may say that's bullshit, but you are, you have, you've shown a willingness to listen. And that's all the white person has to do. But they can't do that because they're afraid that you're going to accuse them of something. No, I like the fact that somebody's listening. Want a great way to help a worthy organization and educate children about the civil rights movement? Visit our foundation, the Joan Trumpower Mulholland Foundation, at the jtmfoundation.org. That's the jtmfoundation.org. We are a 501c3 established to help end racism through education. A $5 monthly recurring donation will provide curriculum for 30 students. 
As my mother used to say, I can't do everything, but I can do something, because doing nothing is not an option. If you have wanted to help in this cause, but didn't know how, now you can. The Joan Trumpower Mulholland Foundation at the jtmfoundation.org. Well, and and of course, you know, white people will quickly say, well, what, you know, well, what about me? What about me? You know, what about my feelings? And, and, you know, I feel attacked too, and these sort of things, which I don't want to discount as being nonsense, even though I think it is. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, particularly white men, their place in society has always been on top. Right. And so they have not had to think about anybody else, whether it be women, whether it be, you know, people of color, uh, you know, gender, you know, you know, gender identity, these sort of things. Um, white heterosexual males have never had to think about anybody else because everything has resolved, revolved around them. Right. And now they're being forced to consider the, the impact of what they say and what they do uh, on, on other people and how society has basically benefited only them. And, and society is saying, hey, look, there are other people who live here besides you. Right. And now it's your turn to start considering our feelings, uh, whereas in the past, everything has been about heterosexual white males. That's it. It's, it's now that people, because of the, the makeup of this country, it is here that people have to face things that they're not used to facing. But I know that I, as a black man, I'm one of those people that says, if the person is willing to engage and talk, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it honestly. I'm going to say what hurts me, what doesn't. I'm going to say what bothers me and what doesn't. But if the person is willing to talk, I'm willing to talk. Uh, a lot of people have not gotten to that point because... Uh, 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 the, the riots that we talked about, or what goes on in this country, it's going to be a while. People are black. Black people are still discovering what's been done to them, and the pain is real. Exactly, exactly. So anyway, I think yeah. that just as it is, it is, it is all of our job to understand that we came up under the same system, right? That racism is not a bad word. It's simply a, a, a definition of how we came up. Now, if you want to change it, you can. There we go. Man. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice little, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't know. What you're, amen. All right. Amen. So. amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bud. But, uh, stay, stay safe, man. You I too. Appreciate you. All right, brother. All right. Thank you again for listening. Make sure you head to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Loki Mulholland. Show a little love if you can and get access to even more content. Until next time, don't be afraid to get uncomfortable.